Hi and welcome to this special edition of This Is Your Life, featuring some of the sporting greats that we've honoured over the years. Greg Norman, Peter Brock, Wally Lewis, Jeff Fennick, Rod Marsh. All household names, all champions in their own sport, making them some of the most popular guests of honour we've had on the show. Greg Norman, this is your life. And one of the great things about our special is you get the chance to walk down memory lane and relive some wonderful moments. <laughs> it was here at the Australian Golf Club in Sydney where Greg Norman hit off in his first Australian Open and alongside the great Jack Nicholas. Except for Greg, it was probably one of his more forgettable moments because in his opening drive, he clipped the ball and it dribbled only 30 metres. Jack Nicholas went on to win. But this is just one of the many nostalgic tales you'll hear in the next five This Is Your Life programs. Dawn Fraser, this is your life. And as a bonus, there are two sporting specials and on the DVD edition, production scripts and a photo gallery. We hope you enjoy it. Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. Now we're here at the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Melbourne. Our guest of honour is attending a dinner here for the Royal Children's Hospital. He and his wife are literally metres from here being interviewed on stage in front of 400 guests. When that's finished, he thinks he's flying straight to Sydney in his private jet. But what he doesn't know is that the evening will only just be starting. So let's go and surprise him. That Greg Norman is not just the world's number one golf. Greg Norman, this is your life. Congratulations, Frank. We know that you've always been fiercely proud to be Australian. I know everyone here would agree. Well, tonight, we want to show you just how fiercely proud that we are of you. Gregory John Norman. You were born on the 10th of February 1955 in the North Queensland mining town of Mount Isa. The youngest of two children to your parents, Toyney and Merv. Your father is an electrical engineer and your mother, when not looking after the family, is an avid golfer. She loves the game and continues to play right up until she is seven months pregnant with you. Your parents now live in Brisbane, but we've flown them here tonight to be with you, Toyney and Merv Norman. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, was Greg always a golf fanatic? No, he wasn't. He um, he preferred to play other sports, but one day he decided to come and caddy for me when he had nothing else to do. That and was that... a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely bored that day, right? <laughs> But he decided he'd um, try and go out and play with my golf sticks, so um, he was hooked after that, and then I ended up caddying for him. Did you, <laughs> <laughs> did you always, did you think that Greg would end up a golfer? I guess not. He could have spread out into a few other things, but this one will do, I think. I think. Tony and Merv, thank you very much. Please, take a seat. Greg, one of your greatest fans who's followed your career every step of the way, unfortunately can't be here tonight. It's your 85-year-old grandma and she sends you this message. Hello, Greg. Congratulations on your success in life. You have come a long way since I published as a nurse to you. I'm very proud of you. Enjoy your night. 
<laughs> you're three months old when your family moves from Mount Isa to Townsville, where you grow up. And your very first sporting rival lives right there in the house with you. It was always the same. I'd beat him and he'd beat me up. Your older sister, Janice. <laughs> Was there that much competition between you two? Absolutely, yes. I used to have bruises up my arm. <laughs> it was a rat bag. <laughs> and you, you also did a bit of sailing together, I believe. Actually, yes. Right? Dad made us a little boat. And because I was the older, I was the skipper. No, you weren't. Uh, I was. No, that's <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> I ended up having a mutiny and I got kicked off. <laughs> Is that, you had to go on another boat? Absolutely, yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Those were the days, yeah. Oh, great days. Yeah. Okay. Janice, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Greg, your parents buy a holiday house on nearby Magnetic Island. Every minute of your spare time is spent camping, skin diving, <laughs> or fishing, as you can see, which is still one of your greatest passions today. Now, even though there's a nine-hole golf course on the island, you rarely play. Like any young boy, you're far too busy being mischievous. Remember the time we tried to trip the dunny cart man? It's your friend from the island whom you haven't seen for 18 years, David Hay. <laughs> I, I remember when he was slim. Too. <laughs> well, you're not too good yourself. <laughs> now, you two were real terrors on the island, weren't you? Oh, we got it to the top row. Oh, come on, oh, you were. <laughs> yeah, there was one time, Mike, that uh, we uh, were out set to trip this guy who used to come and enter the, uh, the outside toilet. And uh, we sat up all morning waiting and waiting for this guy. We had the wrong night. <laughs> <laughs> and it just went out to sea, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> In 1969, when you were 14, your family moved to Brisbane. There you attend Aspley State High School. Your parents join the local golf club and it's only now you start to develop a taste for the game. A year later, as a 15-year-old, your parents buy you your first set of golf clubs and you're hooked. His appetite for golf was matched only by his appetite for wheat bix It's your old school friend from Aspley, Greg Lyons. <laughs> So he didn't have a bad appetite, huh? Mate, he had an excellent appetite. He's the only bloke I know who could eat a whole box of wheat bix in a single sitting. <laughs> and is this because of golf? Oh, he needed the energy, you see. He practiced all day, all night, indoors, outdoors. Eat like a horse. Yeah. Great picture. Thanks, have a great night. Okay, Dad is one of the greatest pro golfers in the world today. But he had a head start. His mother carried him from green to green seven months before he was born. Greg played in our Desert Classic in uh, 1986, but he hadn't been back since. Was it something I said, Greg? But you did win some prize money, $1,369.72, to be exact. But that was the start. You went on to win nine tournaments that year. Congratulations, Greg. Hello, Greg. Has the night been embarrassing enough for you yet? Because it's about to get worse. I'd like to say, on my own behalf and also on behalf of a great many Australians, how proud we are of you being an Australian, what you've achieved and how you've managed to do it with such dignity and such charm, which reflects great credit on you and on the country. Have a good night. Well, while the other kids at school are studying Shakespeare, you are reading books by your hero, Jack Nicholas, The Golden Bear. Then at 16, you win your first trophy. By the time you leave school at 17, your handicap is scratch. An astonishing feat for a schoolboy who's only been playing for two years. It's now you start to consider golf as a profession. So for the grand sum of $38 a week, you start as a trainee professional at the Royal Queensland Golf Club. A lot of the members were complaining we had wild pigs on the course. It's the only person you still call coach, Charlie Irvin. <laughs> Now, 
time, son, what he's done to you. Yeah. Charlie, what do you mean, wild pigs? Pal, the way this guy practiced, and the way he dig up, dug that golf course up, they had to get rid of him. And, and they got to the stage where there was so much turf in one area. And one of the committee guys said, that the wild pigs arrived. He said, no, it's a young guy that's going to make the world stage one day. And, uh, pal, Greg, 1976 is a big year. Having only a handful of amateur titles under your belt, you're allowed to play on the Australian Pro Circuit on a trial basis. You win in only your third tournament, the Westlakes Classic in Adelaide. Now you're sure you can make it as a pro golfer. So sure, you tell your mum you'll be a millionaire before you're 30. As it turns out, you miss that prophecy by only one year. But while golfing might come easy to you, socialising does not. You're extremely shy. So you decide, if you are to be the best, you're going to have to come out of your shell. How difficult was that? Well, it was very difficult, Mike, because I remember winning the Westlakes Classic and I was standing in the corner of the, um, of the room in the clubhouse and, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm thinking, you just won this golf tournament. If you're going to be as good as what you think you can be and what you want to be, you've got to get out there and mingle. And uh, part, of, part of life and, and golf that I didn't understand at that time was the other side, communicating with people. And uh, that very time, I remember standing in the back left-hand corner of the room with my big white belt on and my green shirt and my white right. pants. Oh, my own, yeah. I had a beer in my hand. That was my only friend there. But, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I knew then that um, I felt good about my future and I had to come out of that shell that uh, I, was, I was very much an introvert as a kid growing up. Yeah, and you certainly have. And after that win in Adelaide, you're dubbed the Golden Bear Cup because of your similar looks and style to your mentor, Jack Nicholas, This win entitles you entry into the 1976 Australian Open. And on the first day, you tee off alongside none other than Jack Nicholas himself. You're so nervous, your first shot travels only 30 metres be <laughs> before it hits a tree, right? Yeah, along the ground. <laughs> <laughs> along the ground. <laughs> Now, Jack can't be with us tonight, but he sends this message from Florida. You know, you've come a long way since that little white-haired kid that I teed off with at the Australian back in the late 70s and that uh, dribbled it off the first tee. Uh, you know, you've played a little bit of good golf since then, and you've got, uh, you know, you've got a lot of good years in front of you. And for, don't forget, not long till the senior tour. We'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs> he would have to add that. Yeah, huh? he would, wouldn't he? <laughs> Greg, at 24, you play your first US Open. Now, on the return flight, you catch a glimpse of a stewardess and you fall in love immediately. You vow then and there to marry her. And two years later, you do just that. And, Laura, I wonder how you reacted to having Greg Norman chat you up. Well, at the time, no one knew who he was. You know, uh, I was quite attracted to him, and he said he was a golfer, so I'd gone up into the cockpit to tell the pilots that I was in, just fell in love with a golfer named Greg Norman. And they said there was no such golfers, and he's just giving me a line. <laughs> By 1981, when you're 26, you have a bride and your first Australian Open title. In 1982, your daughter Morgan Lee is born, then, in 1985, you celebrate the birth of your son, Gregory. Now, they can't be here with us tonight, but they tell us they're taking great care of the house and cars and everything else in Florida, and they send you this message. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, Mom and Dad. The Guess what? We're home alone. <laughs> but the boat's fine, Dad. And don't worry, the bike's going well, too. And I've taken the Ferrari for a spin, too, Dad. Congratulations on tonight. We're very proud of you, and we'll see you next week. Congratulations, Dad. Bye. You're 31 when in 1986 you launch an assault on the world golf circuit. That year, even today, is still called the Year of the Shark. You win nine tournaments, one of which is your first major the British Open, a title you later reclaim. 
you are now the number one ranked player in the world and become the first golfer ever to win more than one million US dollars in a single year. Now throughout your career, you may not have always won, but you've always come close. And it's this consistency combined with your never say die attitude that has earned you the respect and the friendship of some of the most influential men in the world. This is your life, Greg Norman. I don't know if this is a roast or a tribute, but I do know something about Greg Norman. And I know the respect that all sportsmen in America have for this man. Indeed, some of us would like to see him transfer his citizenship to the United States. Impossible, though, and because Australia's never had a more patriotic son. I salute him. I hope you know that I love your country. I hope you know that I'm familiar with your love of sports. And I hope you know that I have great respect and admiration for the shark, one of a kind, a great leader in golf, and a warm human being whom Barbara and I are proud to consider friend. You've got a wonderful life, Greg. Keep it up. You've made many friends on the course, from seasoned champions like Steve Elkington to brilliant newcomers like Kari Webb. Well, these two great Aussies join us now. <laughs> Steve, apart from spending a fair bit of time on the golf course, you guys have done a bit of fishing too, haven't you? We have. Greg uh, talked me into taking some time off the tour one time to come fishing with him, and he has an esky in his, uh, in his boat that holds 140 cans. And uh, <laughs> when we arrived back at the, uh, the morning that night, we, we had two left, and that was it. The, <laughs> all the strength. I had to take off another week to uh, get over the trip. You, you couldn't play golf for a week? No, I had to take another week off to get over his trip. <laughs> I'd just uh, like to congratulate Greg on everything he's done. I know he has supported me this year, and um, I'm just very honoured to, to know Greg and to be here tonight. <laughs> Greg, you're here tonight to help raise money for the Royal Children's Hospital, and one child in particular plays a very important part in your life. In 1990, you meet a young boy suffering from haemophilia. Tragically, he's the recipient of a contaminated blood transfusion and contracts the AIDS virus. He is Sam Roberts, son of one of Australia's leading sports commentators, Sandy Roberts. Like his father, young Sam is a golfing fanatic, and you are his idol. You visit him whenever you're in Australia and regularly keep in touch with him by phone wherever you might be playing. In 1993, when Sam is 15, you take time out of the Australian Masters Tournament to fly to his hospital bed. Sadly, he's only to live a few more days, but his parents still cherish the time you spent with him. Here now with a message is Sam's dad, your close mate, Sandy Roberts. Greg, you brought so much joy and happiness to many people, particularly children, including Sam, whether it was trying to beat him on the snooker table or helping him with his geography lesson. In fact, I don't know who was helping who in the end, but they're memories that we certainly cherish, and I know that Sam loved every minute of it. Have a great night. I hope your tournament goes well and you certainly deserve every success that comes your way. On the day that, that Sam did die, you actually wore his name in your hat, did you not? That's correct. I, put a, I had a black hat on and I put uh, Sam in uh, silver. Greg, you've always been a loyal friend and here are some of the world's top golfers who wholeheartedly agree. Well, Greg Norman, this is your life, and I'm sure that this is probably a big surprise to you, but all the things that you have done in your life and, uh, of course, the things that you're going to do uh, will be reflected, I'm sure, here tonight uh, in this kind of homecoming, uh, welcoming for you in uh, Australia. Greg, I can't believe I was able to keep this a secret from you last week <laughs> while we played together in the Shark Shootout. But I'd like all the folks down under there to know what a great ambassador you are for your country and the game of golf worldwide. Keep up the good work. Our friendship has just been something that uh, I've valued for an awful long time. I think the fact that we can be so competitive on the golf course and then walk off the golf course or go fishing and whatever it might be and spend time with our families and we leave that all on the golf course, that's something that's really important to me and I think it's unique in our friendship. 
Greg, your place in golf in history is well and truly assured. But you've often said if you had a second choice in life, you'd be a racing car driver. Well, here's a message from another world champion from England, your blood brother, Nigel Mansell. We send all our love to you. Many, many congratulations for being uh, the star you are and a great friend. All the best, Greg. And Greg, here's another close mate. Someone we've flown in all the way from America just to be with you tonight. US IndyCar champion, Danny Sullivan. <laughs> You look like a priest. Oh, I, I won't say one. <laughs> now, Danny, Greg doesn't only like to win on the golf course. Is that true? No, he's, uh, he's a pretty good sport, but uh, the one thing that riles him more than anything is to lose. And it doesn't matter what we're doing. We've done a lot of stuff, whether it's uh, jet skis in Florida or Crazy snowmobiles stuff. in Aspen, where he accused me of trying to kill him. Uh, <laughs> or even a couple times when we raced home from dinner. And it was yeah. like the Indy 500, but the one thing about him, he can't stand to lose. And you beat him racing I, home? I beat him a few times. He's beat and, me every time. <laughs> and, I'll, never, uh, I'll never forget that snowmobile trip. And I've never been on a snowmobile in my life, you know, and, and Danny's got these two souped up snowmobiles that do about 120, well, something right like now. that. Anyway, yeah. He says, follow me, right? I'll never be on a snowmobile <laughs> in my life. Follow me in a blizzard, right? And here you go. <laughs> in and out these trees. And I get wiped out and the snowmobile gets buried there. And I think, oh my God, he's never going to find me again. <laughs> it took us about two hours or an hour to dig this snowmobile out of the snow. In, in fact, don't you have a nickname for Danny? Uh, no, I think I do, but I'm not going to say it. Okay. What is it? No, no. no. I'm not going to say it. I mean, well, you call me wanker it. a lot, but... Uh... Well, <laughs> these people down here don't understand what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greg Norman, you've come a long way since those days on the Magnetic Island Golf Course. But while the fairways and the size of your galleries may have changed, your country charm and your sincerity have not. You're undoubtedly Australia's most successful international sportsman ever. A true champion in every sense of the word. Greg Norman, this is your life. When in Sydney, our guests choose to stay at the Sheraton on the Park, and in Melbourne, at the Grand Hyatt.